Thank you. How do you feel after you sing a song together with people you might not know? And you're actually able to improvise harmony. How did that feel? Show me thumbs up, thumbs down, I don't know. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. And I am here today to um, work with my beloved partner to uh, talk more about being an influencer of bringing singing back full force into music education in everything that we do, including instrumental ensembles, certainly general music, and really making singing come back to life in schools so that kids can do it until they're me, which is an old folk. And they do it with passion, with smiles, just what we felt when we were doing that. And I was looking in your eyes and making you laugh, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, so welcome to Music Education Influencers. Read the rest of it. We hold the key to the future. Like, mean it. Come on. We hold the key to the future. Who's we? Uh, raise, your hand if, raise your hand if you're the we. Raise your hand if you're the we. Okay. I'm Sandy. That's Michael. I'm Michael. That's Dandy Sandy. <laughs> I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I like to hold it in my arms and keep it company. I like to see. I like to see the world for once, all standing hand in hand, and hear it echo. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you so, so much for doing that. Um, who else sings it? Who else remembers it enough? My chorus is doing it right now. Excellent. Yay. Now, do, does anybody here, is anybody here old enough? <laughs> Don't worry if you're not old enough. But does anybody remember what the product was that, that was advertising? Say it out loud. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. So we had a Coca-Cola thing, but do you remember visually what was going on in that commercial? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say it out loud. Who wants to say it out loud? They were holding hands on a hill, grassy. Kids. Who was they? Little kids. Kids, people. There were people yeah. from all over. People. There were people from all over, and there were lots of major music stars. I really feel from looking at what's happened and listening to what's happening in public schools now, that we're neglecting singing. There I've said it, that we're not preparing people to be singing adults. And what my mission in this time that we have together, which is too short, is to make you mad, is to arouse your adrenaline, and to get you back to your classrooms and start singing again with kids, songs that are meaningful to the cultures of the kids that you're teaching, to traditions, to history, to the whole world, I'd like to hear the world sing again. And we're getting into a point in this technological time when artificial intelligence is creeping up on us as we sit here, and it's gonna be waiting for us outside the door. It's creeping and creeping and creeping. What's gonna to happen to songs like that and to songs from Africa, to songs from Asia, the songs from everywhere in the world where our children are now coming from into our music programs. What's going to happen to singing now? Who's in charge of that? We are. Raise your hand if you're in charge of that. Okay, now look around you. And if you see somebody, get them up. Get them up again. Don't you put them down and be afraid. You're responsible for this. I'm sorry. I'm responsible. He's not. Yes, he is. He's responsible for this as well. We're all in this together, and we are arbiters of the culture of these children, and it's got to be an eclectic culture. They're coming from all over the world with different experiences, different things that they hold sacred. Why aren't we singing those songs? Or are we? Who is? Okay, just be, be proud if you are, because it's a big step to take, isn't it? What did you find out that was happening when you started to do that? 
What was the reaction of the kids in your class? Somebody. Push back. Why? Um, they didn't want to sing African songs. Ah, why? They Let's dig, and nobody talks it. about this outside of here. The language barrier. The language barrier. Let's be, let's be real. There's racism in our country. So sing a song. Yeah. That the that's kids realize that the songs that they like come true. from another ethnic group. Mm -hmm. Then they are maybe, I don't know who the kids are, Peace but do they realize yeah. this? Do they understand this? Do they sing songs in Spanish? Do they sing songs from African countries? I'm seeing yes. I'm seeing yeses. And some of you are probably saying, geez, no. They're, because we are the ones. We are the ones who have the kids technically from pre-K through what? Where does it end with you? Fifth, five, five seven, six, seven. Okay, if they're not singing in middle school, it's our fault because they don't love it. Because they weren't taught to love it before they got there. Adolescents will sing. They absolutely will sing. So we have all these publishers. This was my elementary methods teacher, Eileen McMillan, who was on the Ginn company that wrote this book. Look at it. Look at it. Occasionally, uh, Norman Rockwell. Uh, lots and lots of songs, lots and lots of uh, countries represented. <coughs> Just rich with that. Nobody knows what this was. She was a goddess. You can take a look at them. What did we do in the school systems when I was director? In, um, Wellesley. I'll say in two places. I was in, I was, I've taught in Newton, Brookline, and Wellesley because I wouldn't teach in a community that wasn't on Route 9. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that was a stipulation. And in Brookline and in Wellesley, I was director. And so I said, oh, are you guys teaching the same thing in all of these schools? Are kids coming up to the high school knowing the same kinds of things? What was the answer? No. no. How can that be? So if you are an administrator, you need to ask that question of your teachers. Because if there's a lot of disparate teaching going on, they're part of a feeder system that's going in one place to the high school, right? Mm -hmm. And what do high school teachers have to do? If they're coming up with all different philosophies, all different methodologies, what do high school teachers need to do? Get them on the same bring them together. together. They need to bring them together, but it's a heck of a job. Mm -hmm. If they've been taught dogmatically, this is the only way to do things. So you're gonna have to figure that out with your colleagues. It's not a singular thing when you're in a feeder system. Don't destroy the kids for middle school. Don't destroy the elementary school kids. Teach what you teach with passion and for crying out loud, talk to each other more. Demand from your director that you have PLC time or whatever they're calling it with your colleagues to say, what units are you doing? What concepts are you teaching? When are you teaching it? How are you teaching it? Who's doing that? Who's doing that here? Okay, then stay there. And a standard vocabulary. A standard vocabulary. Okay, yeah. Heather, relatively new to administration, brilliant teacher, and now leaving the Denham Public School. And I, I can't say this enough because I, I've seen the damage that's done when people get on a high horse and they say, this is the only way, this is the right way, and I don't want to hear what you're doing person who's teaching the same level kids. That is a sin. Because those kids now think, what's that? It's like teaching them all different languages, getting them into the middle school when they least need to be in, in crisis over their musical identity. They least need it then. And they've got to start all over again. It's like, what do you call it? T? What do you call it? Da? What do you call it? Tu? What do you call it? Do? What is this? So talk amongst yourselves. Make compromises where it's logical. Please, I'm begging you. I'm an old goat, I'm ready to go out to pasture, but for my life, that's what I've seen in really good school systems. And yours are really good school systems because you're there. You need to be the leader, and you need to talk amongst yourselves and compare what you do in your curriculum and eventually make a commitment to a curriculum that's common. But what we decided to do in Wellesley, which is, you know, it's itself, it may not work for everybody here, but we decided that we were going to have a series of units that everybody was going to teach in every grade. We all decided it. The person who taught kindergarten had a say in it because what we're doing is we're spiraling. Have you heard me say that before? Do <laughs> you see anything I'm wearing? My hand How about this? <laughs> okay, this is the way we have got to conceptualize curriculum. It's not optional. 
<laughs> okay, I'm trying to get up on the chair here for crying out loud. Okay, this is it. And it starts at birth. It starts with pre-birth. Suzuki has the mothers listening to the repertoire in the ninth month. Did you know that? And so is Gordon, Edwin Gordon. Did you know that? There are recordings that gestational mothers are listening to in the ninth month in both of those methodologies. And then when we go up and up and up, you'll, you'll notice how the colors sort of merge and meld into one another. This is the feeder system. And if this thing is changing drastically from one color to another, there is no conversation going on about curriculum, about content, about values. What is valued in today's multicultural society where we can't do what we did 15 years ago, we can do some of it, but it can't all be that. Do you understand what I'm saying? You agree with that? Okay, so this keeps going. It goes beyond 12th grade. Where does it go? What's next after 12th grade? College, we might not have a say over that, but what happens to each individual who's coming out of your program, whether you teach preschool or you teach all the way up through the grades, what's coming out at the end? An adult. An adult is coming out or an adult in the making. Now, is that person going to answer this question, which I have asked at least 5,000 people and gotten a very disturbing but pleasant answer to it? Could you sing happy birthday to me? It's my birthday. What do you think they say? I don't I can't sing. Say it louder. Say it to the person sitting next to you. I'm not a singer. What are you saying to each other? Say it. I can't sing. How the heck is that possible with you guys teaching them? Do you think about that? How is that possible that an adult, before drinking anything at a cocktail party, can say, I, I don't sing? And if you ask a follow up question, what would the question be? Why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. Then they run away. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk about it. Who's had that experience? Mm -hmm. Then go out and have it. Mm -hmm. And take a poll yourself and see how many adults, even here, <coughs> don't sing or think they can't sing. What are they losing? Say it. What are they losing by not singing? Joy. Joy, the joy of singing. I mean, the joy of singing, those children singing that song, sing a song, make it simple to last your whole life long. Don't worry if it's not good enough for anybody else to hear. Don't worry. Anybody got a comment you want to make? Yes, ma'am. Um, a coworker told me that her choir teacher told her not to sing. Yes. Okay, that's worth an article in the Music Educators Journal. I mean, I think we should start talking about that outright because that to me is murder. You've just murdered the spirit and the potential of that child. All it takes is an adult figure, an authority figure, an honorable authority figure to tell you you can't. All they hear is you can't and don't. And they say, I can't sing for the rest of their life. And We've they murdered it, it. They take it in as if they're not even musical. Absolutely. They, and assume it's part of them. Absolutely. Yeah, you know it. this, right? You know this. It's hard to know it when you're in the thick of things in school. In terms of planning a curriculum, whether you're a classroom teacher and you have five other people in your department who disagree with you, you each have to determine what it is that you see your kids doing as adults. And the first time you say, mouth the words, you have committed a murder. Does that sound too harsh? I'm coming. <laughs> I have my spiral. I'm dragging it behind me. <laughs> but the thing is, what that statement, that one statement that's forgotten immediately by the teacher who makes it, because they don't want the parents to say, oh, there was a kid who was singing off key, and it ruined the whole thing. Shut up. We don't talk like that here. It's... I'm having trouble singing right now, but I'm going to stick with it and get better. That's what we've got to say to them, not please mouth the words. Because all of my teachers knew how I felt about this, and you will not murder a future singer, and you will not take a part of that person's life away by saying, don't sing because you ruin it.
So when you see a colleague do it, can you say that something to them in a very nice way? But in an insistent, persistent, and consistent way is everybody can sing. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. Yes? yes. yes. So I, I can't dance. Well, teach them how to move to the beat. You know, do some eurythmics in class. But try to get people to a point where they can dance for the rest of their lives with great joy and celebration. Try to get them to a point where they sing even if it's off key country and western. And just put up with it because you love them and you want them to have a beautiful life. That's what we're teaching. In what we pick to, to, to do listening lessons on, not just singing, the songs we choose have to represent the population in front of us. We agree on that, right? There, We understand this. The world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's our responsibility to know those songs. Here's a brilliant guy who does that so well, and you're going to hear about that in the next hour. Yes, ma'am. What about those more boys who don't want to sing, who are just like insistently refusing? OK, if it's in more junior high, techniques. middle school? Uh, fifth grade, fourth, fourth grade. and sixth grade. OK, so, <laughs> so. Anybody got a, a solution? Oh. Say it out loud. You don't have to raise your hands. I was going to say, I have those boys in my class, too. I don't have a solution. Well, they skip, they skip in school over here? And move yeah, I think so. Sing yeah, cool. anyway. Have them do movement to the music. Have them do sign language to the music. Eventually, they will sing if we are persistent enough. All my fifth grade boys sing. Yeah. Super engaging games. Yeah. You know what? Welcome them. Just say, yes. we need you. You need to sing. I mean, can you do this? Come on. I'm going to go after you because I know you can do it. Hey, in the lunchroom, hey, how about singing me a song or singing with me? You know, I don't know how you're going to do how your relationship is, is with kids, but we are recruiters. Yeah. We're influencers and we're, rec we're recruiters. They like singing marshmallow song um, Happier. I know that. Yeah, my, yeah, my, cool. my fourth grade and fifth graders are like, I want to sing that song Happier again. We did like body percussions to it and they sang along. There you go. Yeah, like, so you figure out where they are, especially the adolescents, especially boys and voice change. You can't turn them away then. You have to take care of them through that change. You have to do something special with those boys to make them feel like a million bucks. Okay, so make it motivational. Have passion for it. Don't just pick the kids who sound the best. If you do that, you're not living up to what you went into this business for. Everybody can sing, even if it's not in tune. Let them sing and they'll eventually come around. I promise you. You read the first one in this big thing here that's underlined. Somebody read it out loud, go. Song-filled song adventure. Make music education a song, say it, song-filled song adventure. adventure. Say it for the rest of it, together. Influence all students to become confident, lifelong singers. Can you do that? Yes. Are you going to succeed with everybody? No. Are you going to try with everybody? Yes. You're not getting out of here until you say that. <laughs> right? Please, please, we're not singing out there. Anybody you stop in the street and ask to sing for you, one out of ten people will, will sing some popular tune for you. Please, I'm begging you. This is the last time I'm going to do this session. Okay, so the next thing is sing in every single what? And this guy here is the pro on that. Is we sing in ensembles, we sing in band, we sing in orchestra. We sing everywhere because this is where our music comes from. It's inside of us. It's not just here or here. It's from here. And so sing their parts. Have them sing their parts as much as possible, not the intricate ones, but you know what I'm saying. You can't tune a chord in the ensemble. What are you going to do? Have them sing the notes and hear where they're out of tune and do that. Who does that already? Let's be proud. Put your hands up if you do it already. Okay, ask these people. They don't charge much for consulting. <laughs> okay, underneath that bubble is create, read it with me with gusto. Create, perform, respond, and that stop. What is that? Those are the national standards, foundational things that we're supposed to be addressing. Who's doing it? Who's doing it? Who's not doing it? No, don't you dare. Okay, you should be doing that, and singing should be involved in every one of those functions. Do we agree yet? Yes.
Do I have to shout louder? I'm getting louder, aren't I? I start at the top again. Sing songs from what? Here, Here and now. Stop. Here and now. What does that mean? Pop music. Pop music. And you're going to pick the good ones because some of these kids may be in that field. It doesn't mean that we cannot do that, but we have to pick. And we have to ask them too. What do you think is a really quality song? Yes? Why do you think so? Let's listen to it as a class and let's talk about it in terms of the criteria that I've been talking to you about when you sing. How about the next one? Long ago. Don't give up the historic songs. We're saying, oh God, we can't listen to Mozart and Beethoven anymore with the, you know, the multiculturalism. That's BS, that's multicultural, wouldn't you say? It just can't be the only bill of fare. It's one plate on the buffet. And you have to decide how big it is. You have to decide. Because MENC, oh, it's not MENC. NAFME is not going to do that anymore. You know the, the president-elect is from Berkeley College. Mm -hmm. Cecil, good guy. Yeah, OK. And McManus was on that, that board at, at one time uh, in his life. So um, this, is, this is, and then the other one is what? Far away. Far away. Who has kids from other countries, other parts of the world? OK, that's probably going to be 100% of us. Do you know the music from that area? Have you studied it? And make general music singing centric. Draw your curriculum out of songs, out of cultural songs. There's where the history is going to come from. There's where the human motivation is going to come from. That's where the heart is going to come from through many different uh, historical venues. And then let's read together and shout this is your battle cry. Open the window so they can hear us out there. OK, together. Ready, go. Promise? Yes. yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. <coughs> what the heck is that? Yee. What's that? Join in with me, everyone. What? A flash singer? <laughs> this little song of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. responsibility yes. and you need to think about what you're influencing because if you're saying don't sing just mouth the words because you're out of tune you've done a murder there and you need to go to prison shame 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 <laughs> get out of my sight get, go away yes sir I just wanted to add something about I'm seeing everything on here and I, I worked in an unnamed district but the elementary school teacher had the students sing every day um, but they hated it because he wasn't singing joyfully, he was just singing. It became a process. So the only thing I wanted to add, because I love everything you're saying and everything on here, is just adding in not just singing every day. But if we're not joyful when we're doing it with them, it turns into a chore. And by the time they got to me, they said, I don't like singing, I've done it every day. It's not fun. And I said, no, 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 what you did wasn't fun. Singing. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Let's clap for that. If you're in a school system that has multiple elementary <coughs> schools, the teachers need to be of one voice on what songs the kids are going to learn by memory. You don't have to teach everything the same, but you have a common core, a, a core curriculum of songs that every kid is going to come out of second grade knowing by heart. You're going to do the same thing for fourth and fifth grade. You're going to do the same thing for sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. Look what we did. We had, we had song books. We got permission to do this because we weren't selling them. This, is the, uh, this was the Wellesley 6th and 7th grade song book. The kids had to know all these songs. But they were embedded in units. 
You got that? They weren't just sung for the sake of singing. They had culture around them. Kids knew where these songs originated, and they had them memorized by the end of the grade. What a gift that is, don't you think? You can't do it in one year, but you gotta do it with your buddies. You can't do it by yourself because it's gonna go nowhere. Can you give it up for Sydney? I don't want this to be a one and done. Yeah. I recorded this session. I'm putting it up on a Facebook group called Music Education or Being a Music Education Influencer. And I'd like to invite you to join because I would like to keep this conversation going so you can encourage each other. Sandy's not on Facebook, but today she will be, and she'll be looking at these comments and you'll be able to talk to her in these groups and we'll be able to communicate about singing. So let's see if I have it, there it is. There's the QR code to join Music Education Influencers the Facebook group, and after today, I would I'm just sorry. like to keep this conversation going. And I think if we carry the joy of singing and music making, and the diverse, inclusive nature of elementary general music today, into the secondary schools, there'll be a renaissance of music education. Mark my words. And it's needed, don't you think? There were three vignettes that I wanted to share with you here uh, to show in real life how singing makes people cry joyfully, mm -hmm. makes people smile when they're depressed. And I'm sorry that I didn't get to share them. Maybe we will on this, on this uh, website here, there at the beginning. And I've seen it time and time again in my long life. I've seen people come to life by singing You Are My Sunshine to their dead mother in, a, in the coffin at the nursing home. Uh, at the, at the uh, what do they call it? Funeral. The, the, the funeral, funeral home, singing it to her with me and my sister because that was her favorite song. Mm. And we just got up and sang You Are My Sunshine to that mm. woman in her casket. And everybody was in tears. Mm. And that's what it's all about. Mm. That's mm. what it's all about. And so I guess I will share some of those other vignettes that are on the first page here. But let's end together by singing this beautiful uh, Moat song. Earth dance in starshine and earth dance in sun. Earth dance on her sacred brow, we will sing and dance. Now make it nice and legato. We're going to make it nice and legato, not note by note. And let's do it in four part harmony, shall we? <coughs> We're going to stand up and do this. This is our final farewell, and your butt needs to get off the chair. All right, so I guess where I'm going. Here I go, Michael. I'm a going. Oh, knees don't fail me now. Okay, you're going to work. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to sing it. You guys are going to start it. You guys are going to come in next, next, and next. How many times are we going to sing it through? Four. Okay, so when the fourth part is singing the words, everybody else is looing. Okay, so we, we're going to end on the same note. You're not going to drop out. You're going to sing it all the way through to the end. And think about the metaphor of this song in this world out here for these children who are living through this in their childhood. And we have a responsibility, and we have the power. Okay, ones, and you know where you're coming in. Look at the music. You know where you're coming in. I'll look at you, and you know where you're coming in. Sing it through how many times? Four. Four. Four times. And you sing. You sing with them. You pick up when you finish yours. Keep singing with them until we're singing in unison with the last group. Okay? And you can sing with words. Okay? Here we sing Earth Come on, oh, no, 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 come on, come on, come on. After all this, let's sing it, sing it, feel it. Here we sing Earth dance in starshine and Earth dance in sunshine and Earth dance in sunshine
Christ,